Hello and thanks for tuning in. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to write a simple AutoCAD macro. We're going to write a macro that inserts this block. This is a dynamic block that I created in a different tutorial. We're going to place that macro in a ribbon button. So we'll be going into the CUI. The first step to creating a macro is you actually have to try out your sequence of commands within AutoCAD itself. If we type insert, we see that this window comes up. We don't want that when we're writing a macro. The workaround for that is to use a legacy command, dash insert. We go through the legacy command and just see the steps we have to take to insert the block. We want to give the user a chance to pick their own insertion point. This is an annotative block, so I want the scale to always be 1. The rotation angle for this block, I want the rotation angle to always be 0. So before we even insert the block, I'm going to want to change the layer. The easiest way to do that in macros is using C layer, then type the name of the layer that you want. So at the start of the macro, we're going to change the layer. Okay, so now I'm just going to type out the, the order of our macro, just here in model space so I can, I can show you what it's going to look like and explain it. So first we'll use the C layer command and then a semicolon. In macro, a semicolon is the same as hitting enter on your keyboard. S dash anno, that's my uh, annotation layer. Next we're going to do the insert command, but we're going to do a special version of the insert command. So basically the underscore and the period, I forget which one does which, but they basically, one overwrites any possible command aliases you might have, and the other makes sure you're using the global command name because AutoCAD comes in many different uh, languages. So the insert command might be something else in uh, Spanish or French or what have you. This, this dash, of course, is activates the legacy command if there is one, meaning using the command with the dash in front of it won't open a dialog box. Okay, so next I want to enter the name of my block. I think I can grab it from my command line, hopefully. Sure enough, I can. And you know what, I'm going to grab these quotation marks as well. Enter the semicolon. I'll need these quotation marks because I have a space. If I had a dash instead of a space here, then I probably, I, I wouldn't need these quotation marks. Next, we're going to pause for user input. That's going to be done by just entering a backslash. I always want the block scale to be at 1, so just 1 and semicolon for enter. And the block angle, the insertion angle, is going to be 0. Okay, so now we're finally ready to go into the CUI itself. So I just get there by typing CUI, of course. Okay, so I gotta find my command. So while I was making this tutorial, I actually had to start over because I just copied everything from model space from that M text right into here. It didn't work for some reason, so just be aware you might have to type this in manually. So I type the C layer. S dash anno and semicolon for enter, of course. So luckily my block name was still on my clipboard, so I just had to hit control V to enter it. So I have this written down in front of me, so I, I recommend that when you're in model space and testing out your command, write it down on a, on a piece of paper unless you have really, really good memory. Oops. Oh, 
Okay, so all that's left to do is see if that works. Okay, so it appears to be working okay. Normally when I make macros, uh, I, have to, I have to debug it a little bit. Always, always something doesn't work, but in this case I've been rehearsing this and got it to work more or less first try. So that's basically all there is to setting up a macro. Just with this you can do a lot of changes. You can change the layer and the block name quite easily. Uh, one thing to note is that this is an annotative block. When you activate the insert command, if you're using a block that isn't annotative, you'll likely have to use a different order. For example, depending on the block, you'll have to enter an X scale and a Y scale. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any comments, suggestions, uh, de definitely leave them down below. Also, in future videos, I'm planning to show you guys how to make things like this, um, some of these more complex ribbon panels. These work in both AutoCAD Full and AutoCAD Lite. Okay, so it appears our macro is working just like we want it to. One thing I have to point out is that if you're using macro with a block that isn't annotative, you're going to have to change the order a bit. If I remember correctly, it's going to ask you for the, for the blocks X scale and the Y scale separately. So you'd probably just have to add an extra, in this case, an extra one and an extra semicolon. Thanks very much for watching. If you found this video useful, please check out the other videos on my channel as well. Also, feel free to, to leave any comments, suggestions below, including recommendations for fi future videos.